Today's project is this piggy bank. It was fun to make. I still can't help getting, I still chuckle every time I see him. He's kind of irresistible, at least to me. I think he probably will be to you. Stick around, I'll show you step by step how to make this large pink piggy bank. I definitely want to paint this pink, so that means making the parts out of poplar since it takes paint well. I went to my wood storage shelf and found this poplar board that was six and a quarter inches wide and 64 inches long. All the parts will fit on this one board. There were a couple of knots, but I can arrange the patterns to avoid those sections. There was a crack at the far end of the board, but by placing the smaller patterns for the pig's legs at that end, I could fit them in the solid sections in between the split. As you can see, I already cut the patterns. I'll cover the board with scroll saw tape, then use it to attach the patterns. I use my second scroll saw with a number 12 blade in it to separate the pieces into more workable chunks. It doesn't matter what order you cut the parts in, but I have trouble doing anything randomly, so I started with the outermost layer. All the parts are made from three-quarter material, so I chose a number 9 Pegasus modified geometry blade for the task. All the cuts for this project are simple, and the number 9 blade will easily make all the turns while allowing me to cut at a reasonable rate. The two outer layers have the pig's ears, and the top point of the ear makes a perfect spot to start the cut. On long cuts like this, I need to remind myself to take my time and let the blade do the work. It's easy to try to speed things up by pushing harder on the blade, but that's not a good idea. This can cause the blade to flex, leaving a cut that is curved or angled along the edge rather than straight and at a perfect 90 degrees to the table. This is especially important on this project because several layers are going to be glued together and I want the outer edges to align perfectly. If they don't, I'll need to spend extra time standing to correct any imperfections. There's the piggy. I'll peel this off. It's one of the reasons I like scroll saw tape. That's it. It's peeled off. That one's ready to go. Now the next section in is going to have a hollowed out cavity where the coins will sit. So I drilled a pilot hole for that, and we'll make that inside cut first. Always make inside cuts first. Now, they aren't going to show, but as a matter of professional pride, I'm still going to make those corners as sharp 90 degree angles. I could easily turn them into curves, but I'm going to cut them as exactly as shown. As my old boss at Fort Polk, Louisiana, Major Flynn would have said, it's good training and it builds strength and character. When I finished cutting the inside cavity, I was able to easily push the waste piece out through the bottom. I also tried putting the piece back and pushing it up out the top. I was able to easily remove the waste piece in either direction. This tells me that I made this cut carefully and the cut was at a perfect 90 degrees. If it had been off, I would have been able to remove it from one direction, but not the other. That little flat spot at the back of the pig is a good place to start the outside cut. Taking into consideration that this piece will get glued to the outer layer that I already cut, I'm being deliberate in following the line as closely as possible. For all the outside cuts of the parts of this pig that will need to match up, I'm making the cuts with the scroll saw blade just touching the outside of the cut line. I could easily, just as easily cut just on the inside of the line, but the important thing is to be consistent to make sure these shapes match as closely as possible to avoid a lot of messy sanding after the glue up. With that piece cut, I have my first opportunity to test fit the first two pieces of the piggy bank. I held them together and felt I had a near-perfect match on the surfaces that will be the top of the piggy bank. These will be the most noticeable, so I was very pleased with the fit so far. When I aligned the tops and checked out the bottoms, I could see that surface looked good as well. So far, only a tiny amount of sanding is going to be needed. The next piece is the middle of the piggy bank, and it's the section with the slot for adding coins to the bank. Actually, there's no separate provision for coin removal. The slot is large enough so that when you want to remove money from the bank, you just turn it upside down and check the coins out. I started cutting on one side of the slot, then followed the cut line for the cone storage cavity. It's obviously the same shape as the pieces that will be glued on either side of it. This will make this cavity two and a quarter inches wide. It should hold a lot of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. 
After I make this outside cut for the middle section of the piggy bank, I'll be more than halfway through cutting all the main pieces. There will be two more pieces to cut for the pig's body, both mirror images of the ones I already cut for the first side of the piggy bank. There won't be anything new to show in cutting those. So here we go with the... Yeah, those are going to fit together nicely. I'll cut the legs, then go back to cutting the two pieces for the other side of the piggy bank body. There's nothing difficult about cutting the four legs, and they'll only take a couple of minutes apiece to make. Once I have the last of these pieces cut, it will be time to move on to the glue-up phase of the project. I'm using a medium-sized glue bottle for this task, as it gives me about the right amount of glue at a time. I'm using white glue, which I buy in gallon bottles, and use to refill this and a smaller glue bottle with a tiny tip. The white glue is water-soluble, which makes cleanup easy, and it dries clear. These surfaces are large enough that I use an acid brush to spread the glue around after laying down a bead with the bottle. The acid brush helps me to sh make sure I have glue everywhere it's needed to ensure a solid assembly. By washing out the brush when I'm done, I can use it for another project. When I flipped the first piece onto the outer layer of the piggy bank, I made sure the edges, especially the top side of the bank, were lined up as closely as possible. I cut these layers carefully, but they, if they're off at all, I will need to do some sanding after the glue dries to clean up any irregularities. The top of the bank will be the most noticeable, so I want that aligned the most carefully, and hopefully I won't have to do any more than minimal sanding there. With the first inside layer in place against the outs outer layer, I put, a, I put a bead of glue and spread it around the other side of this piece. Then I flip the middle section with a coin slot over to add glue to it. With glue on both pieces, then clamping pressure added later, this will make a very solid assembly. The piggy bank is more than half glued up at this point, and I'm going to set it aside for a few moments. At this point, the glue is making everything quite slippery, and adding more pieces will be a little difficult because of that. By letting everything sit for a few minutes, the glue will start to sit up a little and be more sticky and less slippery, making the next steps easier to carry out. I added a bead of glue and spread it around on the top of the middle layer that contains the coin slot. Then I added glue to the bottom of the next layer and placed it carefully on top of the stack. I put glue on top of that piece, then topped it off with the second outer layer. Once again, the glue was too slippery to move the layers into the clamping position, so I set everything aside for a few minutes to allow the glue to start setting up. That little respite gave the glue time to turn from slippery to sticky. I thought a good way to clamp this large assembly would be to use one of the vices on my workbench to clamp across the entire bottom of the piggy bank. Then I was able to place three F-clamps across the top to hold those surfaces together. That produced a little bit of glue squeeze out on the top, and I wiped that off with a paper towel. I'll give this plenty of time to cure before I move the clamps and take the bottom out of the vise. Then I'll see how much sanding I need to do before I add the legs. I used a belt sander to smooth out the sides of the picky bank because the sections met well, but not perfectly. They are still imperfect, but smooth to the touch, and that's what's important. After sanding, I took the piggy bank to the router table and put a slight round over on all the edges. Sometimes patterns show an exact placement for features like the legs on this piggy bank, but this set of patterns did not, so I'm just going to place them by eye. The larger legs go in the back and the thinner set in the front. The important part of placement will be to ensure all four legs touch the ground to make the pig stand evenly. I know from experience that the best way to add legs is to glue them onto one side, let the glue dry, then glue the second set on the other. With the first set firmly attached, you can place the second set by eye, then move the legs around slightly until the animals stand straight. I apply clamps after I know everything is placed properly. I glued the second set of legs in place and let them dry for a few minutes, just long enough for the glue to be tacky and no longer slippery. I flipped the pig off its side to see how well I had done on the leg placement and found the front leg was a little off. I was still able to move it and I adjusted. Now that I know the piggy bank would set flat, I added one F-clamp to the front set of legs and a second to the rear. I'll leave the clamps in place until I know the glue is fully dried, then I'll take the project to the finishing room for painting. <laughs> 
Here's the completed piggy bank. It was fun to make, and I look forward to taking it to my retail store to watch customers' reactions. If you have a child who would love this guy to help them save pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters, you need to download the plans, head to your workshop, and make this piggy bank. It's an easy weekend project, even for a beginner on the scroll saw. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I encourage comments and I respond to every one. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That way you will be notified anytime I release a new video. But you don't have to wait until then. A suggestion for the next video to watch is on the screen right now.